today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And um, yeah, so I just want to share with you today about identity. All right. So not only is identity important to become established as a Christian um, or as a believer that really walks with fruit. All right. But it's also important to be established in identity to be able to continue growing with more fruit. All right. It is vital that we know who we are. All right. Um, in relation to Jesus. But before we know who we are in relation to Jesus, it's even more vital that we know who Jesus is. All right. And so that's what I mean with identity. And I'm just going to share a few things about identity that is really key. Because, you know, if we walk around all day with like this perception that we are defeated and, you know, everything is is against us and the world is against me and you know the world is busy falling apart and uh, you know and nothing is working out guess what nothing's going to work out but if we walk around you know despite our circumstances if we walk around with the idea that Jesus is on my side the hand of the Lord is upon me I'm righteous I'm favored by the most high I'm called okay um, I'm elected all right I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places if I walk around with that mindset, you know, and I and I go around doing my business with that mindset, guess what I'm going to end up doing? I'm going to conquer the world around me because my mind is then aligned with the mind of Jesus. All right. So and that's why it's important to have identity and to understand what my identity is with Jesus. All right. So let's start in Revelation 1 verse 16. He says he had in his right hand seven stars. All right. And out of his mouth, when it's sharp to it, sword. Now, we know that the sword speaks about the word of God. All right. So we know that Jesus is speaking his word. And that word is sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder flesh and spirit. All right. In other words, when the word of God comes, what does it do? It, it tells you this is spiritual and that's fleshly. And you need to get rid of the fleshly stuff. Right. So, and then he says, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me. Now, here's something really important. Uh, John had this experience. And he saw Jesus, you know, and, G and he had seven stars in his hand. But if you read further on, and we're going to get to in a minute, it says later on in chapter 1 of Revelation, it says that... Um, the seven stars are the seven churches. So what did he have in his hand? He had the seven, okay? He had the seven churches. The newborn churches, all right? He had in his hand, all right? So what is he saying? His hand is upon his people. That's what he's saying. His right hand. So if you go into the Old Testament and you study what that word means, the right hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, right? it means that his spirit and his power is upon his people, right? Let's go on. Verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he, he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the, the one who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Write these things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take to place. Sorry. And the things which will take place after this. Then he says in verse 20, The mystery of the seven stars which you saw on your right hand, and the seven gold. And the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the seven angels, the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says the following. He says, um, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, enduring the cross, despising the shame, and has sat at the right, uh, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So where are we running to? What is our eyes fixed upon? Or what is our eyes supposed to be fixed on? According to Hebrews 12 verse 2, it's supposed to be looking and focused on Jesus, who is at the right hand of the Father. All right, that's where our focus should be. Oh, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm see How do I know that I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places? Because Colossians chapter one says that. Colossians three verse one says the following. He says, 
if then you were raised with Christ. So I just want to say something here in terms of what Jesus, I mean, in terms of what Paul was referring to. He's referring to Romans chapter six that says, if you have been, if you have died with Christ, you have also been risen with him. All right. And he's talking about baptism and stuff like that. But he's talking about the fact of accepting the death of Jesus. Okay. Because he died for what? Our sins. So the moment we receive that gift, it means that we die with him, which means then we are also raised with him. All right. He says, chapter three, he says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. Listen to what he says. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you die and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. All right. So here's the thing. He says that we are seated with Christ. If we die with him, we are risen with him. He says, but then we need to set our minds on it. Where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Okay. So he says we are seated there, but... We need to set our minds on it. In other words, we need to keep reminding ourselves, I'm with Jesus. I'm sitting with Jesus. I need to reaffirm my identity. I need to remind myself of my identity. Oh, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. All right. But we know that he has his hand upon us. How do we know that? Because of Revelation chapter 1. So we are not only seated with him on the right hand, but he has his right hand upon us. In other words, the hand of the Lord is upon us. All right. And so it's important to remind us because he says in Colossians chapter 3, set your mind and keep it set on those things. All right. Hebrews chapter 12 says, looking unto Jesus, where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. In other words, keep your focus on where he is seated, where he is sitting and where you are sitting with him, according to Colossians chapter 3. And so it's important to fix your focus there. It's important to remind yourself and keep your mindset on those things. God is good. Just turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 12, he says, But this man, talking about Jesus, talking about the sacrifice, okay, and how the sacrifices has been done away with. Now he's talking about Jesus and who shed his blood for us. He says, but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering has he perfected forever those of who are being sanctified. Where are we being sanctified? In our minds. What do we need to do with our minds? We need to keep it set. On Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, where we are seated with Him, where He has His hand upon us, His right hand of power and authority on us. In other words, we have been given that power and authority according to Matthew chapter 27. All right? And He also says, and He makes intercession for us. All right? He continuously makes intercession for us. And so because of that, we can go boldly to the throne of grace to ask whatever we will. All right? So... I just want to affirm you and I want to remind you to keep your mind set all right, on the fact that we have favor with Jesus. All right? We are seated with him in heavenly places. All right? He has his right hand of power upon us. Okay? And so keep your mind set on that. Get your mind set on it and keep it set on that. All right? Because you have favor with God. I want to remind you that you have favor of God. You have the hand of the Lord upon you. I trust that this bless you. Share this message. Bless you. Thank you for watching.